You know, more than a million ounces of gold have been found in North Carolina, and there are guys out there every day getting some more gold, finding more gold in North Carolina. Would you like to go out and get your share of some of that? Well, we're going to dig in and talk about the gold that's being found in North Carolina, or the geology of the slate belt that runs through there that's the source of gold, and we're going to talk about places you can go to go panning or sluicing, even metal detecting. I know of some guys who've metal detected some pretty decent nuggets in North Carolina, and of course, historically, there's been some huge gold nuggets found in North Carolina. So let's dig in and talk about some of the gold that's being found in North North Carolina and take a closer look at that. Now some really huge nuggets have been found in North Carolina in the past. This is an 1896 photo of a 24 pound nugget that was found in North Carolina. It's called the Shin Nugget named after a guy and you, they're not finding them like this anymore but I just wanted to show you this to show that big gold, really big gold has come from North Carolina. But even though they may not be making nugget finds that are, you know, multiple pound weight of gold, uh, modern prospectors are still finding some pretty good gold in North Carolina. These are some nuggets that have been found in recent years. And, you know, I, like I say, have heard of guys finding some nice nuggets there with metal detectors. And not all the gold in North Carolina was placer or nuggets. Uh, there was, of course, hard rock mines as well. And all these hard rock mines, you know, sometimes the miners threw out stuff that they didn't realize was rich. And this is a piece of gold quartz from Burke County in the Blue Ridge region. And, you know, going through some of the old mine dumps with metal detectors has some real good potential. And other parts of North Carolina have potential too, uh, both the quartz mines and the placers. Uh, this is a piece of gold quartz from the central part of the state. And this is a real p potential. You know, a lot of these mine dumps have not been searched with metal detectors. And it, when you do search mine dumps with metal detectors, you need something that has good discrimination because a lot of times the miners would toss out nails and other junk in there. So you need something that will be able to tell ferrous items like nails and parts of tin cans from the gold quartz. Now, North Carolina was the site of basically the first discovery of gold in the uh, the southeast area. In 1799, a 17-pound nugget was discovered on the reed plantation. And this, of course, spurred a lot of excitement. And by the early 1800s, they were mining pretty actively there. And uh, a number of other large nuggets were found. In the early days of mining in North Carolina, a lot of the work was done as placer mines because basically the surface materials were very deeply weathered to a material called saprolite. It, it's a deeply weathered, loose material that could be just mined as almost as if it were gravel. It'd be loose enough that you could process it in a sluice box system. And so that's what was the chief early production in North Carolina. Most of the mining areas are, you know, the surface part is this deep saprolite, deeply weathered rock, but at depth you get into mica schist, anise, anise, and uh, then intrusive granitic type rocks. I said we'd take a closer look at the geology, so let's dig in and take a look at the slate belt that runs actually all the way from the southern part of Virginia through North Carolina and South Carolina and down into the northeast part of Georgia. It's got gold all along it, and geologists have said that it has great potential for finding more gold deposits. So let's take a look at that geology. Here's an image of the Carolina Slate Belt that extends from Virginia through North Carolina, South Carolina, and into Georgia. It's been an important region of mineral production. This area and this Carolina Slate Belt is shown here in red. This region is mostly composed of volcanic and sedimentary rocks that were pressed together in a mountain building event and therefore metamorphosed into slate and other metamorphic rocks. Many of these rocks have this kind of a slaty cleavage that breaks into flat slabs, which is why the area is called a slate belt. The rocks were originally part of an 
a volcanic arc similar to modern-day Japan and our Precambrian in age. The mountain-building event, called the Appalachian orogeny, caused hydrothermal fluids to circulate through faults and fractures, depositing gold in quartz veins. The gold deposits of the southeastern U.S. are primarily orogenic deposits, meaning they're related to this orogenic event that built the Appalachians. Later, weathering and erosion of the rocks created placer deposits of gold in the stream beds through the area. Some deposits in the area are also associated with igneous intrusions and are considered epithermal in nature. Now this map highlights some larger mines in South Carolina, but all the black dots on the North Carolina side in the red Carolina slate belt are all gold deposits that were recognized. And in addition, North Carolina also has a western belt of gold bearing deposits in the Blue Ridge area, which is marked as blue on this map in the western part of the state. We'll also get into a map that shows those better in a few minutes. Most of the mining areas, the gold mining areas, are in the central part of the state and in the Piedmont region. And uh, the Piedmont includes Mecklenburg, Rowan, and Cabarrus counties. The other producer uh, that is also uh, generally in that area are found in the Blue Ridge province. And the Blue Ridge productive areas include uh, Burke and Transylvania counties. Like I say, almost all the early production was placer, a uh, loose material, even though, you know, it's, it's material that's weathered in place. It's not real gravel that's been washed around. It's loose material that's so deeply weathered, it just was, could be washed away. Uh, but by about 1850, there started to be more load mining. Um, some of the areas that had been placer mined as they moved the loose material and, and finally got down to the more in place harder rock, they found veins and other deposits that were uh, valuable to mine. Some of them, uh, some of the ones that they mined actually uh, ended up being more rich in copper. And so there were a lot of mines in North Carolina that were actually. Uh, uh, principally for copper and secondarily for byproduct gold. But there hasn't been a lot of uh, mining in North Carolina in recent decades and years as there has been in South Carolina. Um, basically, there's been uh, some off and on little small amounts of placer production. Uh, there are several um, Here's a map that covers the whole state of North Carolina and every black dot on here is an area where gold has been produced and gold has been found. And you can see there's an awful lot of black dots on here. Now you've got the central area that's kind of north and east of Charlotte, uh, including the Reed Mine, Gold Hill, McCulloch's Mill. You know, there's a lot of gold here and probably the majority of North Carolina gold has been produced in this region. It's part of the Carolina Slate Belt. Now, up to the far northeast where it says Portis Placers, this is another little separate segment of the Carolina Slate Belt that has some good gold. But also you have to the west, the Blue Ridge area, and there's quite a few dots uh, there that show gold has been found, especially the Brindletown. That's mostly Burke County that's been very productive and produced a lot of good gold. Here's a map that zooms in on that central area that surrounds Charlotte and then extends further to the northeast. Uh, that includes the Reed Mine and Gold Hill, but also Behringer's and uh, McCulloch's. And, and so th this is an area you can see an awful lot of black dots, an awful lot of dots where gold has been found. It's been a very productive area. Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, uh, Rowan, uh, Stanley, and Davidson and Randolph County and even Guilford up there were McCulloch's Mill. But this has been a very productive area and certainly an area of interest to North Carolina prospectors. So let's take a look again at some places that you can go to pan and explore and dig for your own gold. Now, you know, and there's gold spread all over North Carolina in a whole lot of different places as we've seen. Uh, but, you know, there's issues of access and, you know, uh, most of the land in North Carolina is, you know, held in private hands, although there's national forests and state parks and stuff like that. Uh, but the, a lot of it, the access is, uh, you know, 
oh, not open to everybody. And so if you, you know, have an in with a property owner, you know, you've got permission or something like that, you're in great shape. Uh, but you know, sometimes approaching people, maybe somebody you know, asking for permission can be good. But we're gonna look at places, including national forests, where you can go look for gold, even if you don't have uh, in in the other possibility is clubs. I always recommend people you know join clubs that are in there because a lot of times clubs through their influence can get access to certain areas. So um, between the possibility of a club or, or the national forest or if you know somebody that's got some land in the right area, it's a good thing. Let's take a look at some of those places that you can get out and pan for gold for yourself. Now, I mentioned clubs that are often able to get some sort of access through their influence or monetary, even sometimes I've heard of clubs paying a property owner to allow the uh, club members on there for a certain amount of time. Uh, but there's a number of places that you can pan for gold in North Carolina. Um, there's designated sites like the Reed Gold Mine. This is uh, one of the places where you can uh, pay to uh, be able to prospect. Uh, they have a designated historic creek. And uh, there's some other areas. Um, there's the Cotton Patch Gold Mine in Stanley County. Uh, which is located new, near L New London. It's open to the public for gold panning. And there's also Vane Mountain Recreational Park in McDowell County. But uh, probably the best known for a lot of individuals in North Carolina is the Uari National Forest. It's a, a forest that offers several creeks and streams where the recreational panning and prospecting is permitted. Uh, it does require a permit that you can get at the ranger office and uh, basically you're signing to agree to the rules not to leave any significant disturbance uh, yeah, for your efforts uh, which is reasonable i mean they basically have a leave no trace principle but they allow prospecting on streams like the Uari River and some of its tributaries. So those are that's a good place to go and uh, and get out and get your pan wet and find some gold for yourself. And of course, there's private property, but you need permission from the owner. Um, you know, if you're the owner or maybe you have a relative or a friend or something like that, uh, there can be a lot of opportunities for this type of thing. But you definitely don't want to go prospecting on somebody's private property without permission. Now, wherever you're prospecting in North Carolina, you know, it's a skill, you know, it, it, just going out and tripping over a 17 pound nugget, it's not very likely, okay? But, you know, there is gold to be found, but it takes skill to recover it, to know where to dig and that sort of thing. And I actually have a degree in mining engineering and I've been prospecting as a small scale prospector for more than 40 years. And so, you know, I, I've got the skills and I wrote a book called Fistful of Gold and I wrote it to impart to you the skills and knowledge that you need to go out and find your own own gold and I also have partnered with an outfit called High Plains and they uh, basically are a mail order type a full line prospecting equipment uh, dealer if what you want anything from uh, a, a simple plastic gold pan all the way up to a super expensive metal detector and of course everything in between and of course my book as well you know I've partnered with them and you can get a discount uh, by using them and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book and about High Plains right now. This is my book Fistful of Gold. It's an encyclopedia of everything you need to know to go out and find gold for yourself. It distills down my 45 years of experience out in the field prospecting as well as my degree in mine engineering. It's like I say, an encyclopedia, there's a lot to it. It's over 250,000 words long, uh, hundreds of pages with hundreds of illustrations uh, teaching you what you need to know about geology, about mining districts, about techniques of finding gold. It covers metal detectors, uh, sluicing, panning, dry washing, high bankers, you know, you name it, it's covered in there. It talks of some about platinum and diamonds, but it's mostly about gold because gold is more widespread. It uh, is not so much a book about where to find gold, but a book about how to find gold. Because even if you have a location where gold was mined in the past and you go out there, well, where should you look 
to be successful in your prospecting, to find the gold that's there. This is the book that's gonna tell you that information. I spent most of 10 years writing this book, so I, I thought a long time about it. It's got, uh, like I say, lots of information and lots of illustrations, and I've had results from people who bought it. Um, it's available on Amazon, but I recommend buying it through High Plains Prospectors, and I'll put a link in the description for buying this book through them. They have a better price than Amazon, and I have a special deal that I'll tell you a little bit more about where I can get a, you can get a 5% discount uh, from the price even with that. On Amazon, the book rates a 4.7 out of five, which means that of all the people that have bought it, they've been really highly satisfied. And I think you, if you buy my book, will be just as highly satisfied as well. Now let's talk a little bit more about High Plains Prospectors. They're a prospecting shop, a mail order prospecting shop that I've partnered with. Uh, that The deal is that I can get you a 5% discount uh, a coupon code and I'm going to put the code to that right here. It's just Chris Ralph, all caps with no space between Chris and Ralph. Uh, you put that in there as a discount code and you'll get 5% off their already really good prices. I think it's a great deal where you win by getting a discount. I get a little percentage of that and they get new business. So if you need prospecting supplies, High Plains is really the way to go. And I'll put information, like I say, in the description more about how you can work with them. Because I'm working with them, uh, they really are great guys, great company. For even more information, I also have a website, and I'm gonna show you my webpage and talk a little bit more about that right now. This is my webpage. It's located at nevadaoutbackgems.com. You can Google it, or I have a link down in the description below. But there's lots of information here, miscellaneous stuff, pictures, some historic information as well, stories. Um, it's got a lot of great fun stuff. Uh, you'll probably be interested in it. Now on all of my YouTube videos, I encourage you guys to ask questions. If you have thoughts, comments, um, you know, suggestions for things that I ought to look at in my videos, uh, things that uh, you want to find out more about, and I answer 100% of my questions. There's not very many uh, YouTubers out there that answer 100% of their questions. I'm one of the few. And so I will do my best to answer what you have. I mean, uh, I only can write so much. Um, sometimes the answer is something where I'm gonna recommend that you buy the book and read about it. I also ask that you subscribe to my channel, uh, click the bell notification so that every time I come out with a new video, and uh, you'll be able to watch it. And like I say, I cover a huge amount of topics. I also have 250 videos that I've already done. And so you can go back through my catalog of videos on YouTube. I'm sure there'll be many videos there that you'll want to take a look at, especially if you have any interest in gold or platinum, diamonds, gemstones, geology, and that sort of stuff. My YouTube site is gonna be right up your alley. So I'll see you again real soon. Uh, we'll be out in the field and I'm back in the office uh, at the whiteboard and whether we're looking at gold or platinum, diamonds, gemstones, or other interesting geology, it's gonna be fun. You're gonna enjoy it and we'll see you again real soon.